All right. <laughs> Here we go. So thank you guys for coming tonight and respond, not responding to my message, but at least looking at my message to be here to help with this. Uh, so with that being said, tonight's kind of about Thanksgiving, being thankful. And so Anna, I'm going to have you come open us up with prayer and then we'll go on from there. Okay. Dear God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity that we get to freely gather together in your name. Um, God, I pray that you're um, in this service and work through us and work through each use of the message. Um, touch our lives, Lord. And um, yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. And Michael, you can come on up here. All right. So. <laughs> if you got your Bibles, yeah, we're going uh, to um, talk about Psalms 107 1. If, you, if, one, if one of y'all want to read it, anybody? Is it 107 1? Yep. <laughs> Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His faithful love, <laughs> His faithful love endures forever. Okay, so Thanksgiving is more than a holiday. It's a post. It's a posture of the heart. Psalms one hundred seven. We're reminded to give thanks to God for His challenges and blessing, for for His goodness and enduring love. Amidst your life challenges and blessings. Gratitude shifts our focus from circumstances to God's character. Amen. We better restart this. We always have We get three Alright, that's my message. Just can we come up here, please? Oh, goodness. Yeah, <laughs> Alright. <laughs> 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 it's fine. We don't normally do this on a Wednesday, so... It's going to be awkward because this isn't what we normally do. So, who knows, we might start doing it like this. You never know. So now, thank you for your devotion, Michael. Yes, ma'am. And I and Cece, if you want to come up and lead us in a song. Stand up.
had a little bit more time to get your things together what we prepared so so having to do with Thanksgiving we're going to be talking about not that <laughs> but we're talking about living with an attitude of gratitude So, Psalms 100, 1 through 5. Would anybody want to read that? <laughs> Shout for joy to the Lord. All the earth worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that Lord is God. It is who he made us. And we are his. We are his people. The shepherd of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise him. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Yes. So... How would you guys define what an attitude is? Screaming at people. Emotions. 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 Yeah. How you feel about your emotions. Yeah. <clears throat> How you access your body. Like punching the wall. Yes. Doesn't only really come from how your attitude is. Physically what you do when you <laughs> or mentally yes anything to do with that So an attitude is a settled way of thinking or feeling typically one that is reflected in a person's behavior Just talk about hitting something or whatnot So what then is gratitude? It's, it's the opposite of anger mm -hmm. Gratitude Gratitude is the quality of being thankful, a readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. Okay? So in a world where everything is at your fingertips, we just get what we want whenever we want, however we want it. And then we forget who makes all these things possible. It's easy to get caught up in your day-to-day -day lives. You wake up go to school or work, go home, eat dinner, take a shower, go to bed, and over again. And then the same can go with our Sundays. Our Sundays, we can get used to just going to church because that's what we do on Sundays. But we never 
think about why we really should be going to church on Sunday. So how do we change from an ungrateful attitude to an attitude of gratitude? We're going to dive into the five verses that Michael read and talk about how to more understand how to have this different attitude. So Psalms 101 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. It's a different version than what you read. But from that verse, so, He is worthy of praise. Pure joy is in, in, pure joy is joy in God as its source. Okay? Do you guys understand what that means? Wait, say that again. Pure joy is joy in God as its source. Do you, know, do you understand what that means? No. You want me to say it? Yeah. Oh, I, I understand it as the joy of the Lord is the source of other joys. Like it, all other joys that we have are because of the joy we have in the Lord. Yes. In Psalm 16, a verse says, In your presence is abundant joy. We are to make a joyful noise to express gratitude to the Lord in an audible manner. So audible. Amen. Make a noise. Okay. Doesn't Woo! It, it doesn't have to be pretty. Okay. Oh. Uh, 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 So the word for noise in Hebrew is ra'ash, meaning wow. noise or earthquake. This should create an image in our minds of someone who is full of emotion and will create a large impact with their joyful noise. Wait, read that again. <sighs> impact on someone's life? Or? Yes. Your joyful noise, you being joyful in the Lord will impact others. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. If someone's going through something and they're like, I can't see joy, and you come along all, you know, happy in the Lord, how are you like that? They want to know. Okay? And that's where you you would change others just by your attitude alone. That's by your actions. Yes. <clears throat> So most of us have been to a football game or have watched it on TV, right? Yeah. I totally, yeah. yep. I've, I've not. <coughs> so what are those fans of those teams doing the whole time? Cheering. Cheering you on. We're rooting for you. Yes. Touchdown! Yes. They're up and out of their seats, people yelling, music playing, all kinds of things. This is how it should be when we make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So moving on to the next one, which is verse 102. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. He is worthy of service. Service to the Lord implies three things. Humility. You can't serve someone unless you have a humble attitude. Service implies faithfulness, otherwise it would be service, it wouldn't be service, but betrayal. And activity, you can't serve someone if you don't do anything. If you're just sitting there, you're not, do, you're not doing anything, okay? Many people think that service to God is confined to certain ministries, but scripture tells us that all who know him as Lord and Savior are ministers or servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. So many people live lives with no joy or gladness, and that is because they are focused on the wrong things. Physical things, earthly positions, human accomplishments cannot meet your spiritual needs. If you put your treasures in earthly things, you will have spiritual needs that will never be met. Until you change your focus, <clears throat> nothing will change. An example of this would be like drinking salt water. You, 
keep drinking salt water even when you're thirsty, you're just gonna get more thirsty. So the, the physical things of this world will not meet your spiritual needs. So we are to serve with gladness. <clears throat> Psalms 103, know the Lord is God, it is he who made us, and we are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. So he alone is God. He must be first in our lives, before your job, before school, before your family, before your boyfriend and girlfriend, before your own desires, before everything. God must be first. If God isn't first, it will not work out. This is how we can live with an attitude of gratitude because the Lord we serve is God. He made us and we are his. He made us and he owns us. And then once we sinned, he bought us back with the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. As his sheep, he leads us guides us, comforts us, and protects us, and prospers us. He alone is the source of our very being. Psalms 104. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and praise to him. So this is kind of like the first one we talked about, but we added a word here. Because we said he is worthy of, of praise. Get that first verse. Okay? Now he's worthy of our praise. We're adding us here. He is worthy for us to praise him. The Israelites could only experience the presence of God through the Ark of the Covenant. But now, because of Jesus, he lives inside all who place their trust in him for forgiveness of sins and for eternal salvation. So the Christian today, we are always in the presence of God. So our attitude should always be one of thanksgiving and praise. We are to be thankful and bless his name. When the scripture tells us to bless the Lord, it is telling us that we must profess, acknowledge, accredit, recognize, and confess with our words and deeds that God alone is the source of all true happiness and blessings in life. That is why it is impossible to be in right relationship with God and be without an attitude of gratitude. Gratitude is displayed in the evidence of a proper understanding of who God is, which is what we've been talking about. So now we're going to move on to our last verse, Psalms 105. For the Lord is good, and his love is eternal. His faithfulness endures through all generations. God is good. All Very the time. simple. And yes, we time. hear that all the time. <laughs> and all the time. Yeah. Yes. This is the very last point that brings it all together. This answers the why we enter his gates with thanksgiving and to serve him with gladness because God is good. His love is eternal and he is faithful always. The last verse explains why we need to have the attitude of gratitude. God is good. So how do we gain and maintain this attitude of gratitude? One of the first things you need to do is take inventory of your blessings. Have you ever actually stopped to think about and count the blessings that you've had in your life? Anybody? Yeah. Because many of us tend to focus on the bad moments of life, which gives us the wrong picture of life. We will never see the good things if we focus on the bad things. So take inventory of those blessings and stop focusing on the things that could go wrong. God will be faithful to you no matter the circumstance. 
And the last thing you can do is to take action. We talked about earlier how you need to, you can't serve without doing something. Okay? Only you can choose to change your attitude. You can choose to stay in the place of being ungrateful and hateful, or you can choose to instead look to God and all the things he has done and who he is and choose to have this attitude of gratitude. So, yes. Out of all this, I want you guys to learn that to have an attitude of gratitude, you have to be willing to take that step of saying, okay, well, I'm done acting like this. The action that we talked about. All of it stems from you first. You have free will. So God doesn't make you do anything. You have to choose to praise him, to worship him, to serve others for him. This all starts with you stepping out. That was my message tonight. Uh, so again, I do thank you guys for participating. Because again, another thing, you guys don't have to, but you still did anyways. And I thank you for doing that. And so we're going to end this with prayers. And you guys stand up with me. close your eyes Lord I thank you for this day I thank you for bringing all of us together to spend time in your presence here and Lord I pray for each and every one of us that we learn especially in this time of year to have an attitude of gratitude not only towards God but towards the people in our own lives and Lord I pray that we all take this next step into moving forward in order to do this better. And Lord, I pray that tonight, once we leave here, that you protect us from any harm and that we have safe travels. And thank you for allowing us to come together, to be together in your presence. In your name, amen. 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 Whether it takes us to bed or it takes us home, we win either way. Yes. Pastor Mark Smith. <laughs>